You're listening to This Woman Can, episode 22, How Fear of an Awkward Conversation is Losing You Money. Welcome to This Woman Can, the women's leadership podcast and your source of information related to women's leadership, female entrepreneurship, personal success and career advancement. I'm your host, Janice Sutherland, executive coach, leadership development expert, and the author of This Woman Can, the no bullshit guide for women who lead. And now, this week's episode. Hey everybody, it's Janice here. Thanks for joining me on this week's edition of This Woman Can. And as promised, I wanted to talk about the awkward, sometimes awkward subject of money and the situation that I see a lot of women in that they're willing to lose money by just by avoiding just because they want to avoid a conversation let me let me elaborate a little bit more on that now I didn't embark on I suppose the real career ladder until my mid-30s that's after my divorce and two children and I suppose up to that point I hadn't really thought about the importance of salary because prior to that my focus was just getting the job and the jobs I'd taken were just just being paid enough to keep the walls from the door. I guess that's like my, uh, many other single parents. But anyway, on further reflection, when I look back, I realised that throughout my career I really had to stand firm for what I believe I'm worth and deserve with regards to salary way before in discussions that you know we have now around gender pay gaps. And if I look even deep and delve even further, the chances are that I think I still left money on the table, even though I felt satisfied with what I was earning. Um, but when I take to count all the well-known gender biases that we're now aware that exist, I have to guess that people would have lowballed me when it came to paying me a salary. And what I've discovered in my coaching practice now, um, now I'm coaching more and more women, I see that as a reticence for women to ask for what we, what we deserve. The reluctance to ask for what we're worth based on our skills and experience, to charge for services when we delivered the goods. When we see a salary scale, we invariably go to the bottom of the scale, or maybe if we're feeling really brave, we may hit the middle. and But we rarely, rarely go to the top. And why? Because the pay scale is there for a reason. It's there to recognise the variances in skill sets and experience. And if we are the best for the job at that point, why don't we recognise that when we're faced with the opportunity to command the best, command the best salary? And you may not want to hear this because this, like I've been reflecting on this quite a lot. We really have to take some responsibility as women for the part we play. If I put my employer's shoes on, as you know, I've been an employer before, it's the objective of employers to watch revenues and the uh, the subsequent bottom line. So if they believe they can save money by, and I'm going to do this in air quotes, by getting away with paying the lowest salary, then they will. They're not concerned about your bills, your overheads, or even your worth. They're looking at their bottom line and where they can save on revenues and expenditure. So from that viewpoint, it remains for us to do the same, to go out there and ask for what we deserve and what we're worth. And this is not this isn't just an anomaly. This is like every everybody's doing it. Every woman's doing it. Because I did some more research and a couple of surveys or um surveys I came across. There was a study by salary.com that found 84% of employers expect job applicants to negotiate salary during the interview stage. Yet only 44% of people said they negotiate occasionally. That's not every time, that's occasionally. And 37% said they always negotiate. And in another survey by Glassdoor, it was found that women negotiated less than their male counterparts. So 68% of women accepted the salary they were offered and they didn't negotiate. That's 16% difference when compared to men because 52% of those men would, would negotiate. Now, negotiation, I can probably hear a few people bristle when I talk about that because that in turn brings its own level of discomfort because we're not taught how to negotiate. We're not taught how to ask for more. We're told to be good girls, play nice, 
don't ruffle feathers by asking more heck we don't even realize when the opportunities arise for us to ask more and all this translates into we should accept what we're given and I totally totally disagree with that I think for me I've been fortunate to have had the benefit of honing my negotiation skills as a side but product of working in sales environments and I've flexed these skills when I've accepted internal promotions um, also known as the opportunity to expand my skill set we all know them uh, navigating external promotions uh, annual performance reviews and it's an ability I most certainly didn't have when I landed my first salary role because I remember going into the interview and it's my first salaried role. As I said, I was taken jobs before that just paid my way. That was fine. Um, but I was really bold. I was cocky. I was confident. I told them I was the best person for the job. They'd never interview anybody better than me. I was full of myself that day, really was. They offered me the job and I was fa fabulous. I was so ecstatic. But when they asked me what salary I wanted, I literally froze. I mean, I was like stumped. I sat there just like just like a deer in headlights you know a rabbit don't know where to go you know i'm gonna be somebody's dinner the salary scale has spanned fifteen thousand dollars and you know what i actually jumped in at the lowest figure why why when i look back because i'd aced the interview i was the best person for the job but i still believe i was worth top dollar even though i was the best candidate that was definitely me leaving money on the table um, I rectified it, as I said, the hard way, but um, I could have made it a lot easier for myself. And I'm sure you can recount um, similar scenarios where you've experienced uh, situations where you've kind of just balked uh, when the, 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 sal the salary figure, the salary question comes up. And I'll be keen to hear them. Let me hear, let me hear them. Now, there are four, I suppose, four key scenarios where we can find ourselves when it comes into negotiation for salary. There's our first salaried role, as I said, that I spoke about. But this is incredibly important because that first salary role really lays the foundation for everything you're going to do in the future. It it talks about, you know, it could be it could determine bonus payments, it can determine pensions, it can determine so many things. So it's in, it's in, it's incredibly it's incredibly important we get that we land that right first time. You know we go to organisations and I heard this is going to be outlawed in the US, but I know a lot of organisations still will ask, "What's your current salary? What are you looking for?" They're using it as a benchmark to see what they can pay. And if you say something lower than they're prepared to pay, they're not going to argue with you. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, that really shouldn't pay any any, any correlation to what we're prepared, the organisation prepared to pay me, but it happens. The second scenario is when I said is when we get an internal promotion or we're given the opportunity to expand our skill set or additional responsibilities, take on extra projects. I've seen this occur in so many organisations that have internal restructures where they've stripped out layers of people, but the work remains and that's then divided the, um, the responsibilities amongst the remaining people um, or somebody leaves and they're not replaced. That's all absorbed by the existing people. And if you're lucky, and I'm saying if you're lucky, you'll receive a nominal pay increase, but it's really often a pittance in comparison to what the organisation would have paid the departing employees. And additionally, you know, organisations will sometimes shortchange you by giving you a different title, which looks great on your resume and your CV, but it's not the financial recompense that goes with it, because, you know, you, that, that title really can't pay the rent. And the third is during our annual appraisals. I don't know about you, um, but these are performance appraisals, and quite often these are tied, up, tied in with annual pay increases. And again, I hate to say this, but whilst organisations may want to reward you, they still have their bottom line expenditure in mind. They won't automatically apply the largest increase. It's really up to you, to us, to express how much we bring to the table. And yet so many women hesitate to highlight the contribution they make to company performance. That is such easy money left on the table. And then lastly, there's the external promotion. Again, it's very different to, um, you know, getting the internal promotion because there's no prior knowledge or relationship to color the view of our abilities. It's, our, it's up to us, it's our time to shine, to really demonstrate our abilities and give our best performance, which we do. We confidently answer every question thrown at us again until they ask us what salary you're asking. 
So those are different scenarios. And I find myself fast forwarding. As I said, I've got past that. I've really got past that where, you know, I have... I don't have that reticence now. I'm really clear on the value, the skill, the knowledge and expertise I bring to an organisation because I've walked away from jobs that wouldn't pay my worth and secured roles that did. I've counted offers confident in the knowledge that I'm worth what I've requested. I've commanded pay increases and bonuses commensurate to my performance and I've secured contracts on my terms. And as I said, you know, as women, we are not taught to do that. And I've learned this along along the way as part of some of the roles I've done. And it's experiences I'm delighted to be able to share with women, um, take them on a journey and overcoming their reluctance to ask for their worth, to have the confidence and courage to command what they deserve and be unafraid to get paid and if you can relate to any of these scenarios I want to talk to you so if you're thinking about changing jobs and you want to make sure you're prepared to negotiate you're unsure about asking for a raise you're negotiating a new job job offer or promotion but you're unsure how to prepare because you're really nervous about or you may be really nervous about the process you have a performance review pending you want to be ready to ask um, for a raise or, or ask for a raise outside a review your current salary no longer fits your additional responsibilities. You know, I talked about this getting additional responsibilities and we're not getting recompense for it. You've tried to negotiate before, but it didn't turn out as well as you wanted it to. You're lacking confidence and thought, and just the thought of negotiating makes you feel nauseous. You just want to go, oh, you just want to just throw up. Um, you want to negotiate, but you have no idea when or what to ask for or even what to, or what to say. This is all the work I'm doing because, as I said, I've worked a lot of women on the, on this through these processes, and that led me to develop my own online coaching program, confidently negotiate and get paid your worth in eight weeks, and it's a it's a program self taught self self taught program. You go at your own pace or self paced program, and it covers it covers our relationship with self worth and net worth. The strategies that you need to adopt when the most common salary negotiations, whether it's in your existing role, all those scenarios I've mentioned previously, because we actually do, we we don't have to play the good girl, play nice, or be told we don't ruffle feathers by asking more. And a lot of us think by asking for the salary or a pay increase, we're being braggadocious. I've spoke to a number of women who say, you know, I'm going for these interviews, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell them. I don't know how to come across. I don't know how to show my expertise without coming across as if I'm being, you know, brazen. And it's not about being brazen. A man wouldn't hesitate to do that. So why should you? So as I said, I have this program. It's confident negotiate and get paid your worth in eight weeks. You need to talk to me. I would personally love to talk to you about the salary challenges you're currently facing and how the work I'm doing can actually help you. So you can contact me um, either by email, uh, info at JaniceSutherland.com. Follow me on my social media pages. I am Janice Sutherland on Facebook and Instagram. Or just, you know, contact me through my website, JaniceSutherland.com. Let's talk. Um, it's it, it's it's something that you really need to focus on that as women we really need to get we need to get a handle of because we cannot be afraid we cannot let a, a simple conversation stop us from earning what we're worth and that's really what's happening now it's my question to you I suppose is how much money are you willing to lose just to avoid an awkward conversation that's really the question for you today now so if you're in that situation as I said contact me if you know other people maybe the conversation in that situation ask them to contact me as well share this podcast share this episode it's a really um it's an interesting conversation because I know women don't like talking about money we've always been taught not to talk about money it's uh it's probably crass or you know it's not the thing it's not the done thing women are supposed to talk about but that's how they've managed to keep us in the dark for so long by not talking about what we earn or being able to confidently negotiate what we need to be paid our worth so so it's an ongoing conversation and one I'm really really keen to drive and push for and push push forward
So with that, all that remains to say is thank you so much for listening in this week. Um, got some more great interviews coming up. So be fe- feel free to rate, re- review, subscribe the podcast on your favourite podcast provider. And until we till next week, remember if I can, you can, this woman can. Take care. You've been listening to the This Woman Can podcast, brought to you by This Woman Can, the no bullshit guide for women who lead, available on Amazon and Kindle. For more information about the training and consulting services offered for women who lead, including one-on-one executive coaching and group masterminds, visit thiswomancan.coach.